the Skunk 2 Pro Series intake manifold. Skunk 2 did a really, really good job in designing this manifold because back then, the D-Series was having a hard time making significant power with the OEM or stock intake manifold unless you go ITB or carburetor like Bisimoto until Skunk 2 came up with this design and the significant help on power gains was really, really good. And also here, we would show you the measurements of the rudder length and because you like you know us we're gonna improve this even further by porting it and you know that is something that's gonna make this worth every penny for a manifold and of course we're gonna show you the tricks and changes that we do this way we gain enough of a momentum and power the technical discussion on this one will be just for you Okay, we unpack the manifold and for those that are wondering, in the Philippines we have 7,600 something islands and only 2,000 of them are inhabited and that's still 2,000. So unless you're in the national capital region, which is Luzon, where we are, it has to be shipped. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, now here it is, unpacked and you can see the runners are softly tapered and of course it has a good decent bend not abrupt like the OEM that bends upwards and it causes you know a bit of disturbance when it comes to flow this one it just bends gradually and it's really really good so here we lined up where we're gonna cut the plenum off so we can port it well here you can see on the back side so now we're gonna cut it off so let's go but okay, let me show you guys the better. Sorry about the clanking noise because it's the manifold on the marble plate. You can see we're gonna cut this all throughout there and here. This way we can infuse good taper on the runner number one, right? Even the opening and across here, all the way into the throttle. This way the transition to the run runner number four is gonna be good. Now here, yep now we can see where we can port and get the improvements that we need or want this way the manifold is more efficient right now let's look at it closer and show you what needs to be changed or trimmed out let's look at close you know all right you can see the runner entry there's corners or there's a bit of corners and you can round that off to make it more like a velocity stack entry so the transition is really good right now we're gonna do some work here you can see we blend off all those corners of course here so that the runner number four transitions well from the throttle i'm gonna trim this part here so that it's gonna be good and also on runner number one it's a lot easier to round it off on the bottom right Okay, now let's do this. Let's measure the runner length because we actually did this on the P08, D15B, or ESI intake manifold, and even the Type R manifold of the B series. So let's do this. We'll grab a bit of masking tape and line up, sorry about the noise. Line it up on the flange side. This way we have the length from the flange side all the way to the runner entry, all right? We do this it's, it's kind of crude but hey it does the job easily and actually you know we don't really waste much time right all right now we fix this tape all right there we check it and we get the ruler and it's um nine inches and 25 so nine in one quarter look let me show you 9.25 inches 
there see that okay so when we calculate the runner length we have to include the intake port so we'll do that a little later for now i would say if you're not yet subscribed hit the subscribe button and of course the bell this way whenever we have a new upload on the series or even a tech video like this you're notified and you can watch it right away right and of course, we would truly, truly appreciate if you hit the like button because that helps gain traction for the video. The more likes, the more chances the video gets spread out to a wider audience. So hey, we know people like you guys deserve to watch this, right? So hit the like button. Thank you for that. And now we head off to the porting bench, shall we? All right. And I can see we've oiled it up and we're trying to remove the initial corners okay let's time lapse it so it's faster as you can see i'm trying to feel the thickness every time i make a pass this way you know you don't cut into a hole or across the port wall or the rudder wall right you can see we're smoothing out the rough corners this way it'll slowly blend into a velocity stack kind of opening now let's head to the roof now onto the roof is the same thing we try to remove all the corners and of course we have to go time lapse we have to remove all the corners this way it starts to become a velocity stack entry and to be honest this is kind of addicting like you know when you start to get the shape that you want to go for or do it's actually quite quite fun right and now we, after this let's go to the workbench granted that we could continue going forward with this but hey we gotta show you guys so let's wash it off or uh, this off with water and then let's head to the workbench and here we are now all cleaned up let's show you the back side of the flange of towards the head wait let's go put this okay you can see before the flange there is a ridge or a lump right so we gotta clean that up but do not increase the flange port entry or exit because this way it's gonna be so hard to port match it to the head or to the cylinder head right you can see there is a lump there right okay let me show you guys what i did so that we know what we're gonna fix we actually use the red marker to line up the last one fourth of an inch of the flange. This way I know where to stop when I use the carbide because I'm going to use a carbide here so it's going to be faster because the sanding roll is going to take forever and it's going to be hard to get consistent. Here is the runner entries when we're done with the carbide initially. As you can see, we're slowly removing the corners of the entry, right? It's slowly getting better. Yep. And of course, the first one inch of the entry of the runner, we're trying to increase it this way. It's easy to infuse taper slowly and gradually. This way is going to be so efficient. Okay. Now let's go back to the porting bench and continue. All right, now here we flared up the opening a little bit off the camera because all the phone is going to interfere when I try to push the angles to flare it up better. So sorry about that. So now we time lapse. We make a little bit more passes just to increase the taper on the runner. So we got to, you know, enlarge this a little bit. All right. Before we go with the sanding roll. And you can see it's actually, you know, the finish is actually really good. I mean, you know, if you're running, let's say, carburetor or the inject, if this is, was a wet flow, this would have been fine. You know, but hey, it's dry flow, so we gotta smooth it out. Now let's look closer. You can see we've gotten deeper than usual on the runner, or than earlier, so that when you when we go with the sanding roll, everything is gonna be on point. Right, you can see here it actually looks good as it is, right? But hey, we want to smooth it out to lessen drag because you know it's actually you know it causes drag when it causes drag, that means it's flowing less, you know, because it's not a car, it's not a plane. Okay, here, this is our mix, it has a, a little bit more joy dishwashing soap, that's why it's green, All right? Now it's 80 grit then we go with the sanding roll all right 
Now we're gonna go make passes here and get it smooth. Yep. And as you can see, it's slowly getting to the desired shape and finish that we want, right? You can see it, it's taking shape into a finished product. All right. Yep, now it's runner number two. And then now it's gonna be round number three. We spray a bit more because, you know, the more you lubricate this when you're doing the sanding roll, the better the finish is. And of course, it carves out or carves aluminum a little bit faster. So it's efficient, it doesn't waste too much cartridge roll. And here's the finished. Well, you know, not really finished, but it's almost there. We just gotta pour the other side so it's through and through. And of course, the roof, right? Looks really good now. Yep. Okay, let me finish this and then we go to the bench. All right? All right, now here we are after washing it up with soap and water. Yeah. Look at that. And we'll show you the image of how it was earlier before we ported it. Yep. Okay, now let's look at all the details here. On this part here, we rounded it off like a leading edge of a plane airplane's wing or an aerofoil. And here, the transition from the throttle into runner number four is smoothed out. And of course, we're gonna smooth it more once we weld it and port match with the throttle. And here you can see it's as thin as we can go before punching a hole. And you can see it actually looks like a velocity stack, right? Now let's look at the flange side or the head, the side of the head. Uh, I'm sorry. Remember earlier we markered the edge this way we don't go too big, right? But we have to lose the bump or the lump before the flange. You can see now it's all equal. Okay, wait, let's look closer there look we sm oh, sorry we smooth it out but not enough to large enlarge the flange or the port just enough to lose the lumps yep it's so through and through right let's try to focus it again which you know the phone fails all the time sorry about that yep i thought it was focusing yep now it's ready to be welded and you know make power and you can see on this side here once we get it welded we're gonna port match to the to a 70 millimeter throttle because that's what the owner said he has and they will use right so the transition is gonna be really really good but look at that those are a bunch of velocity stacks right let me show you something here. On this parts here, we can have it welded and make it smoother, but it's gonna cost a little bit too much because we poured this for 10,000 pesos. And we actually gave this deal as 7,500. So it's gonna cost a little bit too much for the owner. But if you think about it, this is definitely night and day difference in performance than this. And remember earlier, we measured the runner length, right? It was, 9.25 inches long as far as the runners go and if you include the port length which is 3.25 that's 12.5 inches total runner length right so i did this i calculated it and to show you guys the rpm on what harmonics or the second harmonic and the third harmonic where it hits and so that you guys know what it helps or where it helps. I calculated 12.5 inches runner length and you can see third harmonic is from 7,000 all the way to 8,000 RPM. So when you think about it, Skunk 2 did an awesome job because that would mean the third harmonic is pushing it at the top end. Like let's say if your cut of if your rev limit is 75, 77 or 78 or even 8,000, it has that push up top. So this is going to be really really good, right? 
and you can click here for the PO8 intake manifold that we ported because on that video we used my dyna sheet and calculated the runner length and also the shift point so you know you can learn about that and reflect it to this intake manifold and also this one the ITR manifold that we ported made a video because we talk about the same thing in the runner length. So, you know, it would give you the hang of it when, when you're reading a dyna sheet or your own dyna sheet and figuring out what to do next with the manifold or everything else as, as far as the engine. But worry not, as the end screen of this video will have the playlist of all the shop work and project that we did so you can binge watch and learn all the things that you want to learn and check it out.